Gustavo Rondón Córdoba, born and raised in Caracas, Venezuela. Now uh, I'm based in Madrid, Spain, in the last two years. And I jumped into filmmaking, uh, I would say almost 20 years ago when I was finishing my uh, bachelor degree in communications in Venezuela. In that time, I was uh, exposed to some film making uh, classes uh, and it changed my view of my possibilities in that time. So uh, I started working in, in, in films and as assistant, uh, assistant producer and things like that. And then I started editing. That's how I became, uh, how I entered into filmmaking as an editor. Uh, I uh, I knew a couple of great filmmakers um, from Venezuela who had started in Poland in, in lots, and and I was I kind of related that with the films that I like it, and I say okay, this I mean this is some people that I really want to learn from, and so I edited a short film, and and then I started writing my own my first film. Uh, I shot it in 2003 and I screened it in 2004. It was La Línea del Olvido. It was a drama, uh, more than a drama. I felt it, I, I feel it right now like a melodrama, <laughs> things like that, <laughs> but it was part of the, of the learning process. And then I made another one in 2004 and then started like doing but a lot of things as, as an editor and as a director and scriptwriter. And uh, one time I said, I, I really want to get deeper into this. And I went to film school in Prague, Czech Republic. At the, I went to FAM. In that time they had an international um, degree that was very intensive, uh, very, when I say that it was like crazy, I spent one year uh, in classes and, and and shooting and editing and writing all the the whole year and it was and it changed my system of of thinking about filmmaking of course. Uh, then I made maybe two or three more in in two thousand and eleven. I shot Nostalgia, which was um, a very important short film for me because uh, I was a it was the film that turned my head of trying to tell stories in a longer uh, length. Actually, it was re really difficult to short it, to make it shorter. And, and, and at that time I said, well, I think I'm ready to start with, with the long feature film. Because I, I, in that time, Venezuela was in a very interesting moment in terms of funding and, and we had a great record on the funding because I'm with my own films and also with films as producers. Uh, we had this production company there and, and as I said, I would say from 2010 and 2016 it was a great time in Venezuela. Solid funding uh, you could actually make a feature only with Venezuelan funds, if you want. But uh, of course, going to film festivals and especially uh, with uh, Nostalgia, which premiered in, in official competition in Berlinale, of course, it, 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 it allowed me to get a, a bigger view and, and, and to learn and to expose myself to a secret, which was a lot bigger, uh, of course, with films that I really like. And I say, okay, if I want to be part of this, I, I, I want to, you know, to learn about this circuit and system and people and, and open up my, my, my mind as creator. And then I had the idea of, of uh, La Familia. And I wrote a couple of, of, of drafts of the script. Um, but in that time, I, like I, I was kind of alone in Venezuela. I mean, we weren't so much. There are not too many filmmakers uh, like really uh, trying to get into the international film circuit, like independent circuit. Um, 
but I've I I knew a couple of producers and directors there. Uh, Ruben Sierra uh, was one of them, and and he said you should like really try to um, step into the you know into the in, into the long feature as quickly as you know don't let the Berlinale experience go down. So let's try to do it. So we we we, we pulled forces. And he told me that there was a French uh, workshop that was coming to Venezuela in that time. I had read some, but I felt that I wasn't ready. And that time I, I wasn't like really understanding what a development uh, meant. Uh, so he said, no, 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 you are not too, uh, too early. It's the, the right moment is exactly for that, to open up your, just your, your mind, to open up the project and test it and see what people think about your idea. And so uh, he and his wife, Marinella, made a, a national uh, workshop like to prepare the projects to be in, in, in Purdue Adusu. And then we got selected. So you were at the Caracas 2013 workshop. Exactly. With both La Familia and, and mm -hmm. El Empath. I mean, uh, in that time, I wasn't involved in El Amparo. Then I became the editor. But, but the producers were the same. I mean, Ruben and Marinela um, came on board I think they came on board after Perdida du Sur, or we were yeah, like discussing in that time. And, and it was very important for us that, you know, that we tested the idea and the, and the vision of the project in, in Perdida du Sur, and we immediately came together. Uh, and we started working. Actually, the director of El Amparo, Robert, became the casting director of La Familia. So we were really like linking. And, and it was a, an incredible time. I mean, it was something that, and then Ruen, the producer, had his own film. So, and, and, and I worked with him as an editor and Robert as, as a casting director. So we made a, a group like very prolific. And, and as I said before, it was a good time in terms of, of funding and, and we managed to you know, to put all the funding for the films in, in two years or so. Now, this, what you're describing where, you know, um, Robert could be your casting director and you could be his editor and you could be directing this film and someone else producing yours and they could be direct. This is unusual in the European context. Not so unusual elsewhere. I didn't mention I'm from Australia, so. Um, um, but it does tell me something about, about well, it does indicate to me that the industry and the infrastructure runs differently. Could you just tell me about that? In that, in that time in Venezuela, uh, I mean, Venezuela had a, a, a very small industry in general over the, the, the history. Um, but in 2005, sort of like a new vision for the fund, for the national fund uh, uh, stepped in. And it took like five years to, 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 to make that solid, as a solid uh, uh, institution and, and a st a structure. Um, but the thing was that there was a very like like in general secret like a lot of filmmakers did films only for the national secret for the national um, spectators and also because there was a like like a like an older uh, generation of filmmakers that were you know they knew already how to make films but only a few ones actually made it into the international circuit. So a new generation came more open, more uh, connected. Of course, there was um, a more connected world in that period of time than before. Um, you could, I mean, the internet, you could learn about the circuit just by reading and watching films and all that stuff. So that's how 
this new generation actually uh, appeared. Like, okay, we want to make films. There, of course, there were there were a lot of people making films for that national circuit, and they made a great impact in that time, because the funding actually worked as um, um, all the films that were made, all the TV put some money into uh, one fund, and that made that any kind of film could be made so it was a it, it was it was good that a, a venezuelan film made a lot of spectators because that helped my film but it was like more independent driven and it was uh, it was sad but it lasted very short uh, as i said before this like gold period just uh, lasted for maybe six or seven years or so and that didn't create like a solid industry now of course the political and economical situation just uh, just crushed the the funding of our country and um, many many filmmakers are in diaspora as i am at the moment but i think we want to say that you know we we put something there and there's a new generation coming behind us that is actually really, really into the international circuit, but with the problem that there is no national funding, like a solid one. So you're based here in Europe then because the funding situation dried up and the social political situation was unstable, is that why? Yes, definitely I am. Um, I mean, I lived in, in Caracas, Venezuela until less than two years ago. And although the, in, 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 film, in, in the film industry, we said that we were the violinist of the Titanic. I mean, we saw that, that the, the, the situation was coming, but I know uh, we managed to, to to, to keep working and, and, and doing films and stuff, but I mean, there was a moment that there was no opportunities. And that's the moment when my wife, who is producer also of La Familia, and I decided just to let's, let's, let's move and try something different. And, and actually at the moment, there is not too much happening in Venezuela in terms of filmmaking. I won't speak about the, the, the political and social situation but so we came to Madrid as a as a possibility to have a base to think to to recreate ourselves and and, and, and to see what's coming next for us as as Ruben as Robert as I mean almost my whole generation is living in diaspora in different places, Mexico, United States, and Argentina, and some European countries. And, and um, was your wife um, on board as producer of La Familia at the time you did the Produire au Sud workshop? Yes, yeah, she was. Actually, we, we made all my films together, uh, but, but the thing was that during the workshop, she wasn't able to, to attend. We had a, a, a very small child in that time, and we, 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 we couldn't manage that we, that we could go together. So uh, I attended, and Ruben was all on board like in the first step, and, and we managed to do it together. And, it was an incredible experience for us. Um, before we go into the details of it, tell me um, what was the trajectory of La Familia then? You know, what was, how did it begin? Um, what development phase and then, and where it ended up? Because it was quite a success. So it's helpful to have that overview of the film. Well, before Produit de Sou, which was the first international experience, uh, we only had tried, um, we had applied to Uber Fund, and they liked the project. Actually, it was shortlisted. It didn't make it into the final round. Which um, one? Uh, Uber Vals. And probably 
Uh, the National Fund, the SENAC, I think we had it already for that time. Um, and that was it. I was very, uh, like, not too confident in that time with the project. I, I think that first step is always very difficult. And with, with this selection in Produa do Sur was very important because, as I said before, we tested the idea. And after that, we started just, okay, I think we shaped the, the, the documents and stuff. And I had all this great feedback from the consultants. Uh, so we wrote, we rewrote the, the whole uh, documents and we started applying to a lot of things in that time. And of course, having this, um, uh, selection in Purdue de Sur, I think it helped a lot for the next uh, step of or, or the next stage of, of applications. And after that, um, it grew a lot. Uh, we made it into Evil Media Residency in Madrid. Uh, we made it into Amiens Film Fund. Actually, we won it. Uh, mm -hmm. We made it into the uh, Ibermedia Development Fund, we made it into Berlinale um, Talent Project Market, we made it into La Fabrique de Cinema de Mon. So we, I mean, I would say in less than a year, the project had a great, great development uh, trip, as I said, because it was, <laughs> and we applied a lot, a lot of more things that we didn't get selected. Um, there were also a few more invitations that, that we didn't uh, attend, but that helped a lot. I mean, having this the, the, this French uh, support, starting from Purdue del Sur, then, then Amiens, then La Fabrique, of course it helped a lot in terms of, 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 of getting that feedback of how to, you know, to tell a very personal story, which I felt that it was very, very local. And, and all those experiences um, challenged me to, 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 tell, to tell it in a way that it was understandable for that uh, international audience. And after that, period of development, we entered into this uh, uh, financial stage and it also was very, very fast. I mean, and, uh, it was the Venezuelan funding was so solid that uh, we didn't need too many different sources in that time. So we say, okay, let's try the, the of course, the French, let's try the, uh, the Latin American, uh, associations and the Norwegian from Norway, yeah, from from Sorfon. And it was, I mean, yeah, we financed the project in, in less than a year also. It was it was quite a successful uh, um, process for La Familia at that time. Actually I, I showed it um, two years after Produa de Sur and I put had shot it earlier, actually. It was because I was preparing myself as director. Um, of course, I was very um, um, temerous as, uh, of, of this film's experience, and I really tried to prepare myself a lot and, 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 and really like shaping the script in a, in a solid way. Nowadays, I, I, I read it and I say, well, it wasn't that solid, but it, but, but it worked. <laughs> And then when, once it was made, tell me about how it was received. Can say yes, and that was it. I mean, that was a very important starting point. Um, because also it had great critics and, and that helped a lot. I mean, although they, they didn't win a, a prize in Cannes, all the critics were, were really, really, really good. And he had, uh, I don't know, I, I think sometimes there are a few, uh, a few festivals around. And I think it, only in the first year we had like 40 or something 
festivals around the world. We, the first prize came in the second festival, and and and, and, and I would say more than twenty international prizes. And in Venezuela, also was quite successful, and it won like twenty five uh, awards in that time. Um, and yeah, that's that's more or less the the the, the yeah the, the way of the film. Yeah. So you had um, European fans in it. Did you have an official co-producer? Yes, we had a, a, a co-producer in Norway. Um, an excellent one, actually, uh, Doug Wu. And we had uh, uh, some associations in France. They didn't get CNC. We, I mean, probably. I don't know. It's very, it's a very difficult uh, source, and and although that they wanted to be in the project anyways, and in that time we already had the Vermelia fund and the Venezuelan fund, and, and we managed to to make the film with only three sources. Um, and then, of course, it came the distribution uh, stage. Um we regret it a little bit not having uh, that French co-producer on board because of course it's different. France for me uh, uh, France is the only country that a uh, that a foreign film can actually have uh, ha have an impact. And having a French co-producer uh, would have been very important for us and we didn't have it. And it was something that we learned uh, from the experience in general. Mm. So when I was listening to what you're saying about Produire au Sud, I, found, I, I can, it's interesting because each person, each participant has taken different things from the workshop that they attended. You know, there's workshops in Bangkok, in Nantes, in Caracas, you know. Where, and it seems to me that for you, there was the dual thing at least from what you said of um, developing the project in important ways and in ways that you weren't aware of prior to the workshops or whether it was script development or the financing plan or whatever at a, a key point for you following the success of Nostalgia when you were just ready. And also um, you felt that it gave it a, a legitimacy that open doors to other workshops. Is there anything um, else that you felt that um, that you recall about your experience at Produire au Sud that was valuable? For me, the, an, another um, keystone was the interaction with the other film projects. In that time, uh, we were seven, three from Venezuela and four from, if I'm not, mistaken is Colombia, Bolivia. Um, I will remember later, but I think five of those seven films were made actually. I think it was quite successful. Uh, and not only made, but very uh, successful in the film circuit. And if I wasn't, if I weren't being in, in Produce Sud, uh, I wouldn't have known those filmmakers, who is people that I really um, admire in this time, and, and, and I admire their films. And if I'm not wrong, all of us were first timers, and so in a way we shared that uh, fear for give that first step. And um, you know, having all this point of view having all this, um, sometimes you feel that your um, difficulties are the worst. And when, when you hear people, you understand that we all are the same. With some particularities and, and that first step is always difficult because um, you don't always have the people having faith in you and your work and stuff. Um, but also, we, we, of course, we, we 
change point of view about the story, about what's understood of the story. In that time, where we were all Latin American, that somehow we share experiences and, and history and, and context and things like that. But also, we had all these European consultants, which somehow, you know, uh, gave us a, a, a more um, rounded uh, point of view to, to approach our stories. And that helped a lot. I mean, having all this linking with those stories and, and, and sometimes what happens is that, that you have your own feedbacks from the consultants, but when you hear the, the, the feedback from, uh, to another project, there's something that you grab and say, okay, I could use this and that, and, and this is something that clicks on me and, and, and I can use and, and and also um, uh, just listening to the to a, a, a distributor expert is something that you try to 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 know also about the industry about the 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 financial part of the, of the, of this art this is a this is a business also and when when you are in in your first step sometimes you are like very romantic. And, and that is something that you have to keep as, a, as, a, as an engine, but also understand that this is something bigger, that, that there's a lot of things happening around, that it's a lot of things being made, and, and you really have to push yourself to, to be a personal, but at the same time be understood and, 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 and communicate things that are, that are important for other people. And in that context where, you know, you, you benefited from peers, it could have gone another way. It could have become, I imagine, quite competitive, right? You're all going for the same funds. Your projects are all at the same stage. You're all first timers. So why did it not descend into that kind of uh, each man for himself, each woman for herself? Well, um, I don't know. I think it's about a generation, <laughs> the people that is that it, it, it is in the same place at the same time. Uh, I didn't feel it, um, even with people that I was in some other programs. Uh, it created kind of a, I don't know, a friendship that that you get actually. You get happy when 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 some of, of those of your partners get uh, uh, a funding, for example. We had a, a joke with with some producer. Okay, at least it stayed in the family, you know. Like like if if one of those just get the funding and you didn't, uh, you said okay, at least it's inside the family. Because I don't know, it's something that that it creates some. Um, uh okay so um you've mentioned the things that um that you found positive about the produire au sud atelier what were aspects that you found challenging about it or that you felt could be further developed or could be improved or you know well i was at the workshop in 2013 and i think a lot of things has have changed since then. Uh, so I don't know how it's um, at the moment. In that time, there was a, 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 it was a distribution consultant. I think it was a sales agent, if I'm not wrong. And nowadays, all that it has to do with audiences is very important how it changes how is it still changing like in, in especially after the pandemic and i think that's a key it's something that uh, probably if you are like a, a new generation that is just you know like like learning from what is happening at the moment it's very natural for you to to understand how new audiences watch films and how new audiences consume films but for uh, people who actually lived the the tube or the change 
uh, actually in my film, La Familia, was exactly in the middle of the change because uh, uh, there was a, a, a time, it was a time where still uh, the theatrical distribution was something important. So still was important to sell territories and to be on theater screens around the world. It was really, really uh, like a dream. As, as many countries, it was better because, I mean, that meant that you were in, in film theaters in, in, in many places. Uh, but also in that time, the, all these uh, stream platforms came in and it was a, like an, a new thing and an extra pressure. If you, were, if you get uh, obtained, as they say, for, uh, for uh, one of these big platforms or smaller ones. Acquired, uh, yeah? Exactly, acquire, obtain. Obtainers <laughs> are the-, the Same the, thing, I get you. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. And uh, so, and, I, and I've been seeing how this uh, discussion is being made all the time. And, and how is how are we going to make our films, our kind of films, being watched by audiences. So uh, I'm, I'm really positive that it would be great to have all this uh, discussion inside the workshop. As I said, I don't know if they're doing it at the moment, but, but for me, it would be very, very helpful at this time. To have a reflection um, about how to get this same kind of film seen on those platforms. The link between or or seen in any in any place. I mean, how do we get to our audiences? Besides, of course, being in a film festival. But how many people is going to a film festival? How how many people are going to keep going to film festival? I mean, how the industry is working at the moment? How many uh, film festivals uh, um, recruiters or, or or sales agency are actually going to film festivals? I mean, the screens, these small screens became the norm. And that's very difficult as a filmmaker that I, that I have always um, be, been thinking in, in a big screen and in a big sound and that, and that kind of, of, of expression is, okay, this, this is the new normal. I mean, it was before actually the pandemic. Now it's, 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 it's almost the rule. So how, is, is, is it possible to, to sort that, to, 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 you know, to give something else to, to, or to just to learn how to, to, to get into those audiences in a different way? So that's a, a big question mm -hmm. mark for me. I understand. And you think um, workshops like Produire au Sud could have a role in that? Yes, Produire au Sud has a, a, a key role, especially because is a is a workshop that goes to different places that are not too um, established. I mean, every time I see, I mean, the, I don't know how many workshops or edition has produced soon right now, but uh, but I I see that normally it work it goes to places where actually it's very important its presence because it, it creates it creates changes it creates uh, possibilities. It creates bridges between all these small places and industry to a, to a bigger place, to a bit, probably the most important place that is France, because it actually is a country that has a, a, a very important funding for all, all those small industries. So it's a means for those um, the different voices to continue to exist different types of cinema mm. yeah. now if you had to just to conclude if you had to um come up with a couple of words or phrases that um characterize produire au sud for you this is more just for the you know it makes a nice grab what would they be i think uh produire au sud is very connected with um, finding new voices in cinema. 
discovering new talents that are in places that no one expects that there's people coming from there. 